If you're chopping SSDs right now, you're seeing numbers like 14 gigabytes, 15 gigabytes. Does it really truly make a difference when it comes to gaming? Today, I'm breaking down 10 of the most popular drives, where they fit best, whether Gen 5 or Gen 4 is best for your gaming rig. Now, if you're interested in any of these drives that I do mention, make sure to check down in the description box down below. Now, first off, I have to say, for gaming load times, PCI Express 5 only matters marginally compared to PCI Express 4. When you check in real life, the differences are only sub-seconds compared to real titles. What you want to do is prioritize capacity, thermals, and the price. Now, PCI Express 5 is excellent. Don't get it twisted. It's still double the speed of compared to something like PCI Express 4. I mean, you're talking about 7,000 megabytes per second versus something that is at 14,000 to 15,000 megabytes per second. Now, PCI Express 5 often shines when it comes to 4K or 8K type of projects and scratching disk, meaning if you're constantly transferring files, it's not going to matter when loading the game or if you're trying to get a higher FPS. When it comes to PS4 or PS5, you're going to be pretty much stuck on PCI Express 4 regardless. Now, it doesn't really matter when it comes to the type of PCI Express M.2 drive that you put inside of a console, but you certainly want to have the fastest, which we will mention. The first one I will recommend, this is going to be the top and the most quickest and probably the most expensive SSDs on the list, if that is what you're looking for. Especially if you're a gamer, streamer and a production worker or you create youtube titles just like this you're going to want something like this which is the samsung 9100 now it is rated up to 14,800 megabytes per second and up to 13,400 when it comes to sequence read and write speeds now it can go up to 2.2 million to 2.6 million iops now, they do have options between a 1 to 8 terabyte model. You can get it with or without a heatsink, as if you already have a motherboard that is built with for PCI Express 5, more than likely you're going to not really need the heatsink. But if you don't have any type of real heatsink on your motherboard and you're putting it in, say, like a MSI uh, Z890 Pro and it doesn't really have that heatsink on there, then you're going to want to get it. But most importantly, the speeds will sustain with Gen 5. This is going to be best fit when it comes to AM5 boards or maybe a Intel 700 series to 800 series. It does have a robust heatsink and it does have enough airflow through there. Now creators pushing huge files, this will future proof your premium builds, especially if you constantly record your streams or you make videos. There is one important thing to note Ensure that your board's M.2 slot is wired to your CPU lanes and that it has adequate cooling. Some small form factors such as ITX or micro ATX may struggle when it comes to using Gen 5 M.2. The second one I do highly recommend is going to be Western Digital's 8100. Now this is also one of the best. It's neck and neck when it comes to Samsung's 9100 because it can have up to 14,900 megabytes per second read and high IOPS. It's also available for up to eight terabytes in capacity. This is also best fit for anybody out there who is going to be using it for a high-end system. Once again, you're going to need a AM5 board or a Intel 700 series or higher for this to work correctly. Now you can get away with some of the 600 series boards. Highly recommend if you choose to get a Gen 5 M.2, you're going to want to get 700 series or higher for Intel and any AM5 board. This is great for anybody that's also going to be using it as for gaming productivity use. Now the pricing is going to be pretty expensive, but that's why I had to bring it up now because it's going to be Black Friday. An underrated drive out there that's PCI Express 5 is Crucial's T710. Another very fast drive where it can reach up to 14,900 megabytes per second over 13,800 megabytes per second. It can go up to 2.2 to 2.3 IOPS. Currently, they have up to 1 to 4 terabytes. It also comes either with a heatsink or you could choose without the heatsink. It has direct storage tuned software. Now, if you're unfamiliar with direct storage, that's practically for the gaming side. There's not many games out there 
that support direct storage just quite yet. You're not going to really reap the benefits when it comes to the gaming side, but you productivity users can get reap all the benefits, especially when you're transferring 4K to 8K footage between drives. This is again, best fit for those power users or creators out there. I recommend a top end AM5 board. X870E, X670E would be best fitted for a drive such as this or an Intel 700 series and higher. Make sure to get a heatsink if you don't have a decent heatsink for Gen 5. It's going to have a minimum height of something along the lines like this. One that gets overlooked pretty often, but is an excellent drive as well as Gigabyte's Aorus 14,000. Now it goes up to 13,600 megabytes per second, over 10,200 megabytes per second when it comes to sequential read and write. It is NVMe 2.0, once again, PCI Express 5, where it is M.2, and it's best on a motherboard where you do have a high-end AM5 board or you have a high-end Intel 700 series board or higher. Now, this is best for builders who want the efficiency of Gen 5, productivity use, gamers and streamers out there alike. This is, again, going to be more of the power users, the productivity users here, the people that want to use it for streaming and creating at the same time. This is going to be great for your PCs here, and that's going to be Sabrent's Rocket 5. Sabrent's Rocket 5 can reach as high as 14 gigabytes when it comes to read speeds. Now, it has very high IOPS. Sabrent typically focuses on strong, sustained, writes, and long-term performance. Now, this is best more for file-heavy workers, for those who have those crazy amount of, say, slideshows that you have to transfer to another drive. And it's also great for those creators out there who's looking for something a bit cheaper, a bit fair on budget, but also is relatively quick. But I may forewarn you, I'm not a high favorite when it comes to Sabrent, but it is certainly a drive that is reliable when it comes to speeds. Number six may impress you, where it might not surprise you at all, which is the champ here when it comes to PCI Express 4, and that Samsung Pro 990. This is great for anybody out there who's looking for gaming purposes, or in fact, you just want to put it inside of your PlayStation 5. It has 7,450 megabytes per second, over 6,900 megabytes per second when it comes to sequential read and write speeds. As superb random IOPS, excellent efficiency, and it is one of the best priced PCI Express 4 MVMEs out there of 2025. Now this is best inside of gaming PCs, laptops, or PS5 with low profile heat sinks because it's not going to get nearly as hot as PCI Express 5. This is often best for PCI Express 4 for price to performance. Now number seven is one that's underrated, which is Next Storage. And Next Storage has excellent one to four terabyte drives. It comes from Japan, does have up to 12,400 over 11,800 megabytes per second when it comes to read and write speeds. This is their PCI Express 5 speeds. They also have a PCI Express 4 speeds, which practically matches Samsung's read and write sequential speeds. Now, if you get the Gem 4 variant, they also have one with the heatsink where it fits perfectly inside the PlayStation 5. And again, you couldn't ask for a better PCI Express MVME for a PlayStation 5 if it's not next storage. Now for the Western Digital SN850X, this one's a legendary MVME in fact. This is one where every type of gamer out there has to have one inside of their PC. Just because it has up to 7,300 megabytes per second, has up to one to four terabyte options. It also has a heat sink option available for those who want to fit it inside a PlayStation 5 and also best in gaming PCs out there. It's also reliable Gen 4 speeds and thermals. And again, Gen 4 thermals are much better compared over to Gen 5. Now, number nine I have to mention is Kingston Fury Renegade, which is going to be up to 7,300 megabytes per second over 7,000 megabytes per second when it comes to sequential read and write speeds. It has up to 1 million IOPS, and this is also going to be compatible whether if you're going to install it inside of your PS5 or if you're going to install it into your PC. Now, this is a great MVME for those who are looking for the best price to performance as it is reliable. I do have to mention, this is one that's probably in the back of everybody's mind which is the Corsair MP600 Pro XT. 
It goes up to 7,100 megabytes per second, over 6,800 megabytes per second. It also is strong, sustained write and read when it comes to endurance and multiple capacities with a heatsink that actually comes with the drive. Now, this is also best for when it comes to work and gaming hybrids. And it's also the hammer that the drive with larger rights streamers recording and also when it comes to productivity use. Is PCI Express 5 worth it if you're just trying to future proof your build? Short answer I can tell you is not just quite yet. Independent testing across real world as we've done earlier to tiny deltas. Often under a second between Gen 3, Gen 4, and even Gen 5. Level streaming assets decompression help, but it doesn't really help you when it comes to FPS, especially when it comes to NVMe. Direct storage can reduce CPU overhead, accelerate asset streaming on any fast NVMe. Gem 4 is honestly decent enough if you want today's titles. Now this is for anybody with the AM5 or Intel 700 series higher, that on Gem 5, if you regularly move big files, if you edit 4K, if you edit 8K or need the maximum scratch performance, Samsung 9100, Western Digital 8100, Crucial's T710, Boris Gen 5 14000, Sabrent Rocket 5 are the top picks for your build. Make sure to ensure robust M.2 cooling. And again, the heat sinks are like that. Best for the mid-range PCs out there, or even the high-end gaming PCs that are strictly just for gaming usage, prioritize it capacity and your pricing save a little bit extra money for that eight terabyte drive that you want samsung's 990 pro is highly recommended along with western digital's sn850x also with kingston's fury renegade corsair's mp600 xt you'll get top tier loading without sacrifice any thermals or pricing now for laptops you want to stick with something that's a bit more efficient you want to stick with more gen 4 because Gen 5 will definitely pull a much heavier load and it will drain your battery a lot quicker even if your laptop is compatible with Gen 5. As a low profile heatsink such as the 990 heatsink or the SN850X heatsink or even the next storage NEMPA, PS5 does not benefit through Gen 5 throughout. The maximum supported capacity for PlayStation 5 is 8 terabytes. If you're rendering or you're moving large giant projects or living in After Effects or Resolve, the Gen 5 move certainly does make sense. Otherwise, grab a well-priced PCI Express 4 to the 4 terabyte drive and you're going to be more than likely happy with it. Add a proper heatsink and call it a day.